everyone welcome back to testify so nice to be in front of you all again um just to share what the lord has been speaking to us about um last week we know we would have talked about the holy spirit and we didn't mention it last time but this would be a three-part series about who god is because it's important to know who he is and to know him as the godhead so last week we talked about the holy spirit and this week we'll be discussing jesus christ all right so we have to introduce jesus christ the way the word introduces like just jump right into it and the bible actually um i would just like to say that jesus christ was not always human um he became flesh to declare the good news of god that according to the scripture and i know in our society or not even in our society generally we can tend to think that jesus was always human but he was not always human and that made a, that may have been god's plan to create him make him into a human but and he had a purpose he had a really great purpose for that but before he became human this is what the word of god says he was and this is coming from john 1 um starting at starting at verse 1 it says in the beginning the word sorry it says in john 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word and the word was god he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So that's what it says in John 1 through 4. And then um, it, verse 14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory as the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth so it is important to know that like who like jesus christ is like he wasn't always um he wasn't always like the the, the son of god he will forever be known as the word of god who came here to this earth to declare what god had to say mm -hmm. and in hebrews 5 and verse 5 it say so also christ did not exalt himself as sorry so also christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest but but was appointed by him who said to him you are not you are my son today i have begotten you so this just proves even more that hey just one random day or one i can't even say day in eternity one random eternity day i don't know moment <laughs> one random moment god was just like i can make you my son and it's it's really like kind of like hard to even picture that because if you look if you just think about your words like how can you make it your word your, like your literal word how can you make your word and tell a man how does that even work i, I was just like ah, like just thinking about how god is literally like three in one it's just like how does this whole thing mash together but god really um opened up my eyes to to really show me this and um in society like with that being said in some religions in some um in some religions and even some persons who claim to be christian um a lot of them they they tend to say that jesus christ is just the son of god and that he was never god and god never said that he was god and that jesus never claimed to be god but what does the scripture has to say about it the scripture is very clear in saying um who jesus christ is and it's important that we both believe that he is the son of god and that he is god um when jesus said to believe in him is to believe in everything that he says he was and everything that the father says he was it's not just to believe one part about him because you may just believe in one part about him and not receive the um or not walk in the victory you're supposed to walk in as it relates to who jesus christ is because you're not looking at him um in an upright manner so it's important to know who he is so that um you can look at him in the right way and believe in him the right way so i just want to talk about like what god really showed me like how god really showed me like how jesus is god and it's something called um the shekinah glory um in my like earlier christian walk like i was 
like fresh out the like I just just get birth and literally I I got persecuted but I wouldn't really say persecuted but somebody I was sharing the gospel with them, I was telling them that Jesus is God and it's like Jesus ain't God people go around talking about foolishness but Jesus is God but he ain't no God and I was like what so you mean to tell me like everybody believe in Jesus is God and like my foundation was faulty i was just believing that jesus christ was god but because everybody else said it i didn't know for myself so this led me to like go on a journey to like find out like that jesus christ is god mm -hmm. and shekinah glory this um refers to like as god's manifested presence or his dwelling that's what like the word shekinah means and you could do some more research on it so god's shekinah glory is like this when we go back um, into the Old Testament in the book of Exodus, God manifested himself as a cloud. Now, simply put it, this is how God explained it to me. If I was to be looking at the distance in the, in, in, in the distance at like that gray cloud, I would just look at it and be like, that's just a cloud. Right. I wouldn't look at it and think any other thing if I was just in the distance and I saw this huge cloud over Mount Sinai. But then individually that's a cloud but that cloud was also god so that's how god helped me to really like understand that yes the cloud is a cloud in itself but then the cloud was also god's manifested presence because um um god told the children of israel that he, they saw no form they didn't see who god was but that cloud represented god so anytime um the israelites would see that cloud they would say god is here his presence has arrived and whenever they would see that, they would know that. It's the same thing with the fire as well. Um, the like fire... And the, burn, the burning bush? It, it, the, the burning bush as well. And the fire that um, that led Israel by oh, night. Right, right, right. Both of them actually. And that is known as God's Shekinah glory. Like that is his manifested presence. And that's how he manifested himself in the old covenant. Yes, if I would just look at that fire, that would le literally just be fire in itself. It'd just be like a flame of fire fire but that was God's presence that that was God and then another example um, and this is actually compared in the New Testament as well um, the bronze serpent um, the children of Israel they complained very harshly about God and a uh, bronze um, well a uh, serpent went around and it bit a lot of the Israelites and they some of them died and then God instructed Moses to take um, to make a bronze serpent and he told them he told them to ha um, put it up and he said the Israelites were instructed to stare intensely at that bronze serpent and then they would be healed from the poisoning that the snake would have given them and that's what, exactly what Jesus in, is compared to it says that when Jesus Christ is lifted up then um, God will draw all men unto him and that is compared to the bronze serpent um, back in those in those times so that's so that's how we can prove that Jesus Christ is God and not only that but we have where Jesus Christ actually, he actually said that he was God. And God actually said that he was God as well. And just to um, prove a little bit more about how even Jesus himself called himself God. And how God even confessed him to be God. Mm -hmm. um, we could go right here in John 8. Um, if you read John 8, you would see that this, this was like an entire dialogue and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Israelites, they were going back and forth with Jesus Christ and they were arguing with him and he was performing miracles, signs and wonders and all of that and they were just going back and forth with him until we reach all the way down to verses 58. Um, and it says verily verily I tell you Jesus answered them before Abraham was I am and when he said I am they knew who he was talking about in the book of Exodus when God was leading the children out of Israel uh, Moses was like who will I tell them who has sent me who, who, who am I gonna tell Pharaoh like who has, who has sent me and he was just God told him to say I am so when Jesus said this this represented God and if right. this doesn't even convince you that he said this in verses, um, when we go to chapter 10 and 33, um, it basically answers the question as to who Jesus Christ was claiming to be. And um, when they was getting ready to stone him, they, um, they said in um, John 10 and 33, we are not stoning you for the good work, meaning like all the healing that he was doing. He said, 
um, they they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Mm -hmm. So we see right here that this prove John 8 and 58. Jesus Christ claimed to be God. Not only did he said that he was the son of God, but he also claimed that he was God as well. Mm -hmm. And then, um, in, and God even confirmed from the Old Testament. This was written in the Old Testament. This isn't even something that was brought into the New Testament. And when I saw this, I was like, wow, I don't understand like why people are debating about this when the scripture is so clear. Right. It says it right here. And this was, um, this is quoted from, this came from Psalms actually. And it's in Hebrews 1 and verses 8. And it says, um, but unto the Son, it says, but unto the Son, He, meaning God, said thy throne O god is forever so we see right here that god himself literally from the old testament called jesus christ god and it's right here and then i just want to finally just um mention this just so um thank you me and just so um finally just make a point um with the with the new covenant jesus christ has to be god because he brought in the new covenant and it's important to understand this so i'm just going to read from romans 7 starting at verse 2 so it says for example by by law a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive but if her husband dies she is released from the law that binds her to him so then, if she has sexual relations with another man while her husband is still alive, she is called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law and is no longer an adulteress if she marries another man. So this scripture right here was comparing, and if you, you could read it yourself, it's in Romans 7. You can read that entire thing. Um, Paul is basically um, using an analogy to describe the, um, the old covenant and the new covenant. And in the old covenant, God made provision for Israel if they sinned. God said, if you sin, you can offer me a sin offering and I will forgive you. However, we see that over and over and over, they continually kept sinning. So we see here that it says that if the woman dies or if any person in a marriage die, you are literally freed from that marriage. So if you were to go with someone else, it would not be you um, committing adultery. And that's the same thing that Jesus Christ did jesus went god when he when he made jesus christ his son when he made jesus christ his son he stood in the gap for us uh, so that we could receive his righteousness and not only did he do that but he also had to die being god he also had to die being god in order for the new covenant to begin because god um, was proclaiming through many prophecies that a new covenant was going to come and the only way a new covenant was going to come is if God died so God made himself or he put himself into uh, into I, I want to say like a fallible he made himself fallible for the sake of bringing in the new covenant and I thought that this was so clever I thought that this was so clever that God could do something like this like he's still alive but then he dead at the same time I thought that God was like so clever that he did something like that and he came up with an idea where he could release himself from the old covenant in order to bring himself into the new covenant so that's basically like how we prove that jesus christ is god so i know Trini have some comments that's that's, that's pretty much a mouthful <laughs> um i think that that's a good way to start the show you know in and in, in regards to introducing jesus christ and who he is to, to pretty much declare that he is not only the son of God, but that he is God. Um, because that's just so important. Um, I know a lot of Christians, um, when it comes to the topic of Jesus, you know, a lot of people are really, um, could be really like surface level about it, or like surface minded, I guess. Like they only know the surface stuff. They don't really know who he is and, you know, the root of what he did and what his work represented and stuff like that. And so, you know, you have people who will say, um, well, yeah, I know Jesus. Jesus is my savior. Jesus died on the cross for my sins. You know, Jesus is the son of God. But, you know, um, today we're just here to tell you that there's so much more, you know, there's so much more to know about him. And um, not only is he God, not only is he 
is he actually God but he is you know he is yes he's our savior that's true but he is also our shepherd our high priest our intercessor and he's the, the mediator of the new covenant he is the whole foundation of the new covenant you know without Jesus we would not be able to be in relationship with God no. and so you know that's pretty much what we want to continue talking about today so firstly I wanted to talk about Jesus Christ um, as a sacrifice you know he was he was for us and for you um, and I know a lot of people know that but you know people don't take it as seriously as it was as it's meant to be taken um, and you know Jesus being sacrificed was something that was prophesied from literally like the very very beginning of times um, if you read in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 8 um, you know before I even read verse 8 the I'm talking about the story where Abraham was tested you know, when he was going up um, to make a sacrifice when God asked him to sacrifice Isaac and um, as they were traveling you know to, to go and sacrifice the lamb um, Isaac saw that there was no animal and he asked his father you know well where's the sacrifice what's going it's on only, yeah. it's only it's only yeah. us and you know the the tools that's needed to, to make the sacrifice and so um, Abraham's reply was God will provide the sacrifice now even though well actually let me read it he said um it says Abraham answered God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering my son and then the two of them went together so even though Abraham didn't even know it he was actually prophesying about Jesus he didn't know it like you know in that very moment he was just saying you know I, I, I assume he was actually just saying something to um, I guess not put fair in Isaac because you know he wasn't gonna say well you know God told me to sacrifice you I'm, I'm about to kill you right now but he didn't say that he said he said you know you know God is gonna provide the sacrifice and although he didn't know it he was actually prophesying about Jesus being our sacrifice and um, I think people should just really just think about it and, and take it seriously and um, you know if, if you can take it seriously or if you if you find it hard to, to really um, understand how important that is I know in first Samuel um, there's a story about Eli and his sons Eli was a priest at the time and he had two sons and um, God judged his sons and he also judged Eli um, about something that his sons had done they were the sacrifice at the time was um, animals they you know back in the old covenant they sacrificed animals and Eli's sons at the time what they were doing was wrong in, in the sight of God they were actually um taking taking some of the sacrifices for themselves to mm -hmm. eat when you know these were were items that was supposed to be burnt on on to on God. the altar you know as something pleasing as something that was supposed to be sacrificed for God now even though we don't have to do that in these days and, and in this time back then during that time that was something that was very holy and very sacred to God yeah they actually died um, they died in a war and I know um, before they died Samuel actually prophesied to them that they were going to die mm -hmm. and God told Samuel um, that this was going to happen and this was because of the evil deeds that they were doing and so the sacrifice correct and so I'm saying that to say God's attitude about what is holy and what is sacred to him is still the same is he still feels strongly about it to the point where he's gonna be angry he, he can get angry with you if if you're taking his sacrifice for granted mm -hmm. um, and Jesus Jesus for, for you and I today and for you and I today um, Jesus was sacrificed for us we don't have to go every day and you know carry a lamb or, or a bird or a bull I mean thank God you know so you yeah. could, could you imagine people will be like well geez I wonder what she did I wonder I wonder I wonder how many lies she told you see how much how much bird she get on her back <laughs> go sacrifice <laughs> they will be all up in our business but anyway um, yeah so the point that I'm trying to make is that this is something that's super important to God and you know as a parent I think about because God sacrifices one and only son I have a son one and only. my one and only son, my one good son. and to be honest with you if somebody came to me and said you know um, I think you should sacrifice your son for the entire world my reply would be I can't even say with words what I would say but I am pretty sure it won't happen it absolutely will not happen I am not sacrificing my one and only son and so 
I mean, it, it, it just helps you to be so much more grateful when you think about it. Um, in, in a literal in a, sense. In a literal, I guess in a, in a literal sense, or, or when you just empathize with God and put yourself in His shoes, kind of, sort of. You know, I, I'm pretty sure that we can't possibly imagine or begin to imagine. But, I mean, just think about it. As a parent, as someone who, you know, you love your children dearly, you love them with all your heart. And for you to use your child as a sacrifice for the world when you even know that some of them still aren't going to choose you and believe in you that's that's a I, I that's a hard decision to make I mean I for me that I would just be I, I don't know I, I I just probably couldn't do it <laughs> but um I say that you know so that people could understand Jesus as a sacrifice is something that we are to not only take seriously but understand that it is it's it's sacred to God and so we have to treat it with the same respect that God would you know that that God intends for us to treat it with that we think that he would want us to treat you know his son um, another thing I wanted to talk about was Jesus Christ as our high priest and so Jesus as our high priest in Hebrews 7 and 27 it says unlike other high priests he does not need to to offer sacrifices day after day first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people he sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself and when I read that you know that has so much meat in it because before before Jesus came you know before he came on the scene you know in the old covenant they had priests for them who would sacrifice for them and, and help them to atone for their sins and stuff and they were just mere men, like they were just men like you and I, like you and me. Committing the same sins. Right, and so it says that, you know, he's not like other priests who had to sacrifice for themselves first and then sacrifice for the other person. So he he was someone who was blameless, you know, he, he was completely innocent. And um, so with the other priests, because they were men like you and I, they had to sacrifice first for themselves and then, you know, then they go and they burn something for you if you had sinned or whatever the case may have been. Um, and that just goes to show that he is so, I mean, just holy because it says that he sacrificed, when he sacrificed himself, he did it all. So he didn't, he doesn't have, we don't have to, we don't have a high priest where every time we need him to forgive us, he has to sacrifice himself again or sacrifice something and then you know forgive us or however the situation may have may have had to been um he doesn't have to do that he's that he's the ultimate high priest jesus even when he died um it talks about how the veil was torn and a lot of persons don't necessarily know what it means but what it means what it was the veil was actually located inside the temple mm -hmm. um and this was a this was where um the high priest only the high priest could have were allowed to go mm -hmm. And behind the veil represented the holy of holies and this is somewhere again where they were allowed to go to to um pray on behalf of the people and you know i guess atone for their sins and stuff like that with god like only the high priests were were, were allowed to to come close you know or be considered in the presence of god and so when jesus died that veil was torn so it represented like this veil is torn no more separation no more separation like you, you can, can come you straight can to close. the source yes yeah, so straight to the source now. you don't need a priest to to do anything for you and so i know like with the catholic with catholics i and think Anglican. or anglicans mm -hmm. you know they go they go and they confess their sins to the priest the, that, that, that's a priest their priest yeah and and then i guess the priest prays for them or you know it's kind of like they are representing that middle that middle man and when we what Jesus is saying man. or what, what, what happened on the cross when that veil was torn is God was making a bold declaration to say, you don't need that anymore. You can come straight to the source. Mm -hmm. You come straight to the source. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is our high priest now. And even in Hebrews 7, earlier in this verse, it talks about Jesus being like Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why we tithe. Mm -hmm. Because we tithe to our high priest. We tithe to Jesus. Mm -hmm. We give our our tithes and our offerings to Christ mm -hmm. and you know obviously with the except ex expectation obviously with the expectation that you know he's gonna multiply for us and not only that we do it we do it because we love him we do it because 
we uh we want to be obedient to his word because his word you know obviously commands us to give and to tithe and we do it out of um love out of um i wanted to say reference thanksgiving oh, okay. like appreciation you know mm -hmm. to, to our high priest mm -hmm. um i mean we don't have to get really into that because we, we, did, a we did a show on giving and tithing so you could go back and click and watch that but um yeah jesus is our high priest now and he is the one who stands in the gap for us he is the he is the middleman between us and god the father and um with that being said i wanted to talk about jesus as our intercessor mm -hmm. because he also prays for us mm -hmm. like literally right now he prays for us he prays for you he prays for me and i know last week we talked about you know the holy spirit being like a like a lawyer on our behalf like like um someone who defends us and jesus does that as well jesus his the actual person of jesus christ you know because when he resurrected he didn't resurrect as a spirit he is still jesus in the in flesh mm -hmm. like he that person right now is before the throne of god praying for you and i a very good example of jesus praying for us is in is could be found in john 17 um and if you go down to verse 20 um the, my bible this version in particular the niv it's titled jesus prays for all believers and um this prayer starts off by saying my prayer is not for them alone i pray also for those who will believe in me through them through their message so jesus was praying for his disciples and he's not only praying for his disciples he is praying for you and for me because mm -hmm. we are those people who believed in jesus christ through their message and for you and for anyone else who will eventually believe jesus christ is literally praying for you right now um and this is his prayer and this is his prayer you know um and so jesus is our intercessor he's and the definition of an intercessor is someone who stands in the gap someone who who stands in the gap i mean and who else would you i mean who else would you want to stand, <laughs> to, in, that to stand gap. in the gap for you you know as it as it relates to to your relationship with god you know jesus Somebody christ himself jesus christ himself is with you he, you know he's speaking to god about you he's putting in a good word for you you know and so um that's pretty powerful I also wanted to, to talk about Jesus Christ being our shepherd. Mm -hmm. He's our great shepherd. He is, you know, he's our teacher. He's our, our, our guide, our leader, you know. Um, and even when when Jesus Christ was being transfigured on the mountain, um, it said that, you know, there, uh, that a voice came down and, and God spoke to the disciples saying that this is his son in whom he is well pleased. Listen to him. And so I say that to say we have approval from God himself. To listen to Jesus to listen to his message his words because you know some people I know I know that some people argue that um, oh well why do I have to to read the Bible or you know men wrote the Bible like no these were the words of Jesus Christ himself and so we have approval by God to listen to his son and he said that he's well pleased mm -hmm. he's well pleased in his son and he commands us to listen to him mm -hmm. Because, you know, obviously what he is saying is truth and it's right and it's obviously the way to go. So um, I, I wanted to say that because he is our shepherd. You know, like I mentioned earlier, this is someone who God himself said that he is well pleased. Listen to him. So all the words that he spoke, you know, even even um, as he speaks to you continuously because he does that. His spirit, he does that through his spirit. He speaks to us. Listen to him. Be obedient, you know, because he is, I mean... As our shepherd, he's he's someone who is you know who wants the best for us, obviously. And even in um, Luke, it talks about it. Um, if a if a sheep goes astray, you know, out of a flock of a hundred, if one even if one sheep goes astray, um, it says that 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 good shepherd would go out, you know, just for that one and look for that one, just and look for that one sheep and you know. That's likened to Jesus. Jesus, he would totally, definitely do that. I mean, and he says that he would. He promises to to, to come and look for us. You know, if we decide that we're gonna go wander off here or there, you know, he's our he's the good shepherd. He's going to come look for you and bring you back, and you know, bring you back to the to the flock. My last point um, that I wanted to make because you know, obviously, we are in a new covenant with Christ. 
we are in a new covenant with God because of Christ Jesus. Um, you know, they had the old covenant and now we are blessed to be a part of the new covenant. Um, and in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 22, it says, because of this oath, Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant. So I say that to say Jesus Christ is, is the surety of, an, of this new covenant. He is the very foundation of this new covenant. Without him, this new covenant would not have all, not would have not at all been possible. Mm -hmm. And so, um, just the fact that we have a brand new relationship with God, that we get to commune with God, the Father, like the Creator of the world, because we choose and decide to believe in Jesus Christ and what He did for us. Um, we get to be in a new covenant with God and you know very soon we're going to be doing a series about the new covenant yes. because this should be foundational for all believers mm -hmm. but um I mean I guess just to help people really understand what it is we have in God and what has been promised to us because yes. that's you know oh, it's just some amazing stuff that's yes. to come um, oh my gosh but I wanted to I wanted to make my last point that 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 Jesus Christ himself guaranteed a better covenant for us mm -hmm. And and yeah, and just to add to a little bit of what um, to what Trinae said, what is a surety? Simply put, and like you could literally take the Bible, literally, and make it practical for you to understand it. Like when I first when as we are studying in our church about the new covenant, a surety. This is to simply put it. If you want to go sign a contract with somebody, or let's say you go. Um, to furniture plus or something like that they would require like if you can't pay it I'm gonna need somebody else to sign um, so if you can't pay then they can pay f on your behalf and that's exactly what a surety is right. literally and God really helped me to understand that so you may not be able to make up what you are supposed to but then there's Jesus as the guarantee of going before God you may not be able to make up this certain amount or your faith may not be up there like where it's supposed to be but jesus adds into the part where you neglect it and i'm not saying this so you could just be laid back and lazy and not go oh after God, jesus can he, that yeah he can handle that for me no but it, it's like saying on those days like when you're weak when those days like when you when you try it and, and you don't get it on those days like literally the verse that says in, in our weakness he's made yeah he's made strong yes so it's, it's just it's just recognizing that hey even like when i fall short it's like literally god jesus it will provide that which i don't have mm -hmm. and i know for me when i first um got my scholarship it was like my parents they had to sign this contract and they took that very seriously it was like hold on if this girl was to go run off we have to take care of this huge bill and like just like understanding like they took that so serious like signing that thing so it's yeah. like it's like, like it's like a co-signer on yeah. a loan or something so if you decide that you're going to go to the bank and you're going to get a loan and they need someone to co-sign to say okay well if you decide to skip town and ditch out on this loan this person who co-signs you is going to pay now me i would take that seriously as well because i need you to know if i am going to sign my name on that you better, you better don't be ditch that. you better don't skip out <laughs> and you better be paying this bill every month or every week or however often they require you to pay that bill because i know one thing <laughs> i could be mad if, if i have to finish off that bill because my signature on that yeah so that's what jesus and, it, and just look at us. it and night like that pro like it's just so practical like when you just take it so literal and it becomes so real to you like oh my gosh jesus christ and the fact surety. that he wants to be our surety the yeah. fact that he wants to be that guarantee for us yes you know, for the for the new covenant because like you said your parents they were you know they took it seriously so obviously you know they had they may have had some reservations about it like eh, i don't know if i would they your parents <laughs> they brought you into the world you know so the fact that jesus christ wants to do that for yeah. us and he wants to be that that co-signer mm -hmm. you know on our behalf knowing that we are imperfect knowing that we you know we stumble here and there you know yeah he still wanted to let us into the covenant with god and it's yeah. so great and we really hope that this video just bless your heart we just want to go back over some few things like jesus christ literally is the last manifestation of god we can see no more clouds there's no more cloud hovering over us jesus christ jesus christ is literally everything 
and like literally the more you just study about God like you may just you might have just thought that he was just like our savior and our friend and our friend <laughs> but literally you just saw Trine just like listed so many things that he is and like you may think like today you may think you know you may think you know Jesus you may really think you know Jesus but listen when he come over when he tell you I is this too then you just like mind blown like Jesus Christ is so everything so, so many things I, yes. I'm still pretty sure we still haven't covered it all you know oh. there may be another time where we may have to do another episode um, yeah. on on who Jesus is and his work because it's, yes. it's like never ending but yes. um hopefully this is something that kind of open your eyes more to you know more to who he is than what Christians and what you can claim from regularly. him what you can really claim from him yeah. so so we we pray that this would strengthen your faith and with that being said your name will lead us out in a word of prayer <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, for bringing us here today, Lord God. We thank you for our beautiful audience, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord God, that you prepare their that you have prepared their hearts to receive this message, Lord. And Father God, we just thank you so much for who you are, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for being our intercessor, for being our savior, Lord God, for being our sacrifice, Lord God, for being our good shepherd, Father God, and a good father, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being the surety and guarantee of the new covenant, Lord God. For without you, we would have no relationship with God, the Father, Lord God. So I thank you for making yourself flesh and taking on the sins of the world for us, Lord God, so that we could have life and have it more abundantly, Lord God. I just thank you so much for this message. And I pray that everyone who has received this message would be blessed and would come into the knowledge of everything and every everything you are, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So... Okay. Let us know. All right. Let us out. Yes, ma'am. So we just want to invite you out to our um, weekly services. We have um, services at Sunday in the Black Legend Hall on Prince Charles setting at um, 10 a.m. And Mondays and Wednesdays, we also have Bible study and prayer meeting starting at 7 p.m. So if you would like to join, you can go ahead and just send us a message and we'll be more than happy to accommodate you so that you could join and worship with us. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day. Bye.